Welcome to my lecture online. Our next JE main problem deals with conservation of energy and in particular we're combining kinetic energy in terms of translational and rotational kinetic energy. So let's read the problem and see what we're facing. It says here that a sphere of radius A and mass M rolls along a horizontal plane with constant speed V. It encounters an inclined plane at angle theta and climbs upward. Assuming that it rolls without slipping, how far up will the sphere travel along the incline? And they were so nice and kind to give us a little diagram here. It's what it looks like. We have a rolling sphere. It reaches the incline. They want to know how far up the incline, not height-wise, but along the incline, distance-wise, it will go. Now, we have to use conservation of energy. We have four possible answers. And so the idea is, how do we figure this out? Well, starting out, we can say that energy initial must equal energy finals. That's the typical way in which we deal with conservation of energy. Now, if there's any energy loss due to friction, we will add that to the right side of the equation. But in this case, even though they don't mention it, we should assume that no energy is lost due to friction because they don't give us a coefficient of friction or anything like that. And also, they don't tell us whether or not it's a hollow sphere or a solid sphere, which would make a difference, so we're going to assume a solid sphere. So initially we have kinetic energy as the ball is rolling, so we, that means we have kinetic energy translational, movement along a straight path, plus kinetic energy rotational, because it's going around in a circle, or rotating about its axis, I should say. And that must equal the potential energy final that it gains, because at some point the sphere will be at some height like this and so we'll have an H, a height H that's been obtained but we need to find the distance D so that's the question how far up the incline will it go so we need a relationship between H and D and we can write that H is equal to D the hypotenuse of the triangle times the sine of the angle theta which means that D is equal to H divided by the sine of theta all right, so now let's plug in what we know. Kinetic energy translation would be one half mv squared. Kinetic energy rotation would be one half i omega squared, the moment of inertia times the angular velocity squared, and that will equal mgh. Now, of course, we want to change the h to a d according to what we have over there. So next, what we need to do is find the moment of inertia. So we have one-half mv squared plus one-half. The moment of inertia of a solid sphere is two-fifths mr squared, or ma squared, because the radius here is a. So we have two-fifths the mass times the radius squared and times omega squared. Now remember that omega is equal to, let's see, actually I can write, write it the other way, that makes it easier. The radius r is equal to, or again, I'm messing up here. What I want to write is that the velocity is equal to r omega, which means that omega is equal to v over r. So we're going to replace omega by v over r. So that means v squared over r squared. In this case, r is a, so I'll write a squared. And so now we've changed the units into linear units, acceleration, linear sense, velocity, linear sense. Oh, I guess that's not acceleration, that's why I don't like to use A, this is the radius. But they cancel out, so we get rid of that like that. And that equals mg times h, but h can be written as d sine theta. Okay. Then we realize we have an m in every term, so that cancels out. And now we have one half v squared plus the twos cancel out one fifth v squared, which is equal to g d sine theta. So on the left side we can combine. The common denominator here is 10, so that's 5 tenths plus 2 tenths or 7 tenths v squared is equal to g d sine theta. And finally, Solving for d, we can say that d is equal to 7v squared divided by 10g times the sine of theta. Like that. 
And now hopefully that's one of the answers and it looks like it's answer D. So that is the correct answer out of the four. So it takes a little bit of work and it does require us to make one assumption because they didn't tell us it was a solid, a solid sphere. So we assume it was a solid sphere and we have to then know the moment of inertia of a solid sphere. So that would be uh, 2 fifths ma squared because a is the radius and we want to convert omega to v over over the radius a and uh, yes that's how we find the final answer i wonder if you could do this in three minutes you'd have to work quite fast because that's about all the time they give you for one of these problems and that is how it's done now there's a quick way to do it, it is. there is a quick way to do it oh. you want to try the quick way <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll do it on the next video.